um, to go over. I also picked up a couple things from Reaper. Um, uh, this is a uh, Mathfinder Miniatures of Reaper, but this is also Dark Haven. I picked this because I got a campaign I'm gonna I was building and um, uh, need a queen. So um, this is one I'm gonna look at and uh, see if there's any mold lines. You can see they're all in the packaging, so we're just gonna go through it. Uh, another one I like uh, from Dark Sword Miniatures. Um, this one has lots of detail. It's really cool. Uh, this is um, the male Dwarven Warrior with a battle axe. It's uh, sculpted by um, uh, Tom Meyer. Uh, very nice uh, one to pick up. And of course, I just picked up another one of the D&D um, uh, Nosers. Um, Marvelous Miniatures is just uh, supposed to be primed and, pre and ready to go. I'm going to open it and just see if there's any uh, flaws to it. So... This is going to be a short video. Uh, the plan is basically we're going to have little uh, short videos uh, along the way. I'm going to have videos every couple of weeks. And so we'll just go from one end and starting and work our way through. All right, then. Let's start off because this is uh, going to be one of the short ones. Let's open up. Uh, let's open up the Queen of Elves here real quick. Take a quick look through it and see if there's any mold lines or anything that might be uh, ready to do because it's pretty much almost ready to be um, uh, to be primed. But I just want to kind of look over it real closely. And they did a really good job on this one. I don't see any mold lines. If you look underneath um, of the um, of the miniature itself, you can actually see a mold line that's there. Um, but looking at the miniature itself, either it's well hidden or I don't see anything at all. Now watch I'll end up priming it and all of a sudden I'll find a uh, mold line, unfortunately. But for the most part, this is almost ready to go. Um, I also make sure I kind of stand it, kind of move it around, see that mold line's actually affecting its balance at all, and it's not. So this one's pretty much ready to, to prime. What's that one made out of? Uh, some sort of metal. Uh, it doesn't really say. Um, a lot of uh, different ones are, this is not pewter for sure. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, when you hold up the mini really quick, and I want to just see if I can get a good if you're holding it up to the camera. This way? The small focus. Small one? Yep. So drop your hand a little bit. Um, go up just a little bit and put your hand flat behind it. I want to see if it'll focus for you. There you go. Perfect. That is dead center. That's dead center? It. Yep. All right. Good. And it's got a really clear focus so you can actually see it. Yeah. It's kind of a neat little <laughs> thing. It's not overwhelming a skull, uh, but it's, it's, it's still pretty nice. Amy asked, what are you doing? It's a new follower. What am I doing? Uh, basically, I am um, right now. We are uh, doing a series of uh, uh, painting painting videos. Right now, I'm showing how to prep, how to actually take it out of the box, and then look at it and see if we can get rid of the mold lines that's on it, and any type of flashing. So that when you start painting, when you start priming your miniature, um, it doesn't show and um, it looks uh, re really nice. Um, Otherwise, the mold lines will be really distracting to the, to the eye when you start painting it. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Uh, we're going to do a series of videos. Uh, I know we already mentioned this, but um, every couple of weeks I'll be doing step-by-step -step of um, what to do when you have your miniatures. So now I painted this one before. I really like it. And... Um, what happened to it was um, it got so much love that the axe fell off, the shield fell off. But I really, <laughs> I really like this sculpt. Um, and matter of fact, they have a little blue tack on here. I'm just removing it to keep the shield on. Do that again, but drop your hand a little bit. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So... We're going to probably end up removing that. Um, as you can see, 
uh, and then we're going to you know look for mold lines again and end up gluing that back on um, right back to the miniature. You can see there's a flashing flashing that's attaching the um, the axe to that um, that we need to remove. Um, I don't really see very many mold lines, but there's a lot of like little flashings that I need to get rid of and file down and so forth. So we might use this one pretty good for the day. Let's open up uh, the Pathfinder one. This one looks like a mess. Sorry, sorry Reaper, but... Oh, if you see my hands all nicked up, it's because I got an uh, unwieldy cat. Not that I'm just doing bad stuff with my knives. Um, yeah, I got a nice little honey. honey. Yeah, honey was not being very loving. We need to have a picture of honey on your stream so that every time we talk about honey, like an image of her giant, gigantic orange self comes up. <laughs> We should do that. You're fumbling with your exact right, <laughs> like it should be something that that people can trigger during your stream. Is a picture. It's various pictures of honey, your murder cat. Yep, yep. Um, let's see if I have one right now to share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that murder cat. That murder cat for sure. I'll do this real quickly if I don't find one in a hurry. Yeah, she's so adorable, but. What gets me the most is her actual murder expression, where, like, her nose is kind of wrinkled. Oh, this is the one she's actually looks like she's cute in. Drop your hand. There you go. She looks real cute in that one, but, uh... Oh, she's murder. She's absolute murder. Yeah. Um, I got other ones, but, um, <laughs> just for right now, we'll give you some good pictures of her. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see her resting, um, uh, bitch face for sure, um... She just lands RBF. She's a massive RBF. <laughs> massive that RBF. Like trigger for your channel. All right, here's one. The Reaper. This is the wizard. Um, you can see it's a pretty big mess. It has lots of flashing on it. Um, yeah, and there's a mold line right there. So this might be one we might just work with today. Yeah, this one's a hot mess. So what I do, um, after I'm done looking at this, I look real closely, look for the mold lines um, on the miniature, because as soon as you start priming and painting this, it's gonna pop, it's gonna really show up. Uh, the flashing itself um, is easy to take off. A lot of it could just kind of like bend back and forth and remove it, um, but if you wanna get real, Technical, I have what we call God Hand. It's actually called God Hand. <laughs> um, side clippers. And what I do with these, I just come to this. And I just kind of clip it right off. <clears throat> and I can go really close with these, and that's really helpful. And it doesn't damage anything else, but just what I want to take off. So we're just going to remove some of this flashing that's all over the place. Wow, this one's really bad. White metal? White metal? That's good to know. Do you take that bar off on the bottom? You can. Um, I have done that in the past. Um, I didn't bring my other miniature that I did that with. Oh, but it sits in the slot. It oh, sits in the yeah. slot. Oh, okay. If I wanted to make... Cool feature. Yeah. I mean, it fits right in there. Oh. If it didn't have flashing blocking it. But yeah, it just fits right in that um, base. I might have to play with it a little bit. 
just like that. And I'll glue that right into there um, when I'm ready to do it. Um, I could do it that way. Another way I can do it is get a special um, base for it mm -hmm. and just saw off that bar right at the foot. So you'd have to like glue or make another, basically glue it to another base then. Glue it to another base. So if you were going to add it to like a diorama or something else, then. Then I would uh, saw that bar right off of there. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to leave the bar on. <clears throat> Got it. Um, it's still, the space has a pretty good uh, lip to it, so you can make your own, um, um, I want to say, uh, like your diorama, like, um, uh, foliage or whatever on the base. I mean, mm -hmm. it has that ability to do this for this one. Oh, that's cool. That'll be something that you cover in a later video, huh? A much later, yeah. Uh, it's almost like the last... The last um, step. step. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, unless you're going to do your own base, then you probably want to do it ahead of time, um, where you want to cut it off and attach it to your base. But um, for my purposes, I do this. Um, and if you do that, you want to also uh, what we call pinning. I'll have to show that uh, some other time too, where you want to pin to your uh, base as well. But this works pretty nice. It's nice and stable. And a little glue, and it's not going anywhere. But meanwhile, we need to get rid of all this flashing. Go through it. Find little parts that are not supposed to be there. Like on these fingers. Can I see it again now that you've cut them off? Okay, that looks way different. Yeah, now we're getting all the flashing off. It's a little bent, but we can straighten it out. So, like I said, I'm just going through getting rid of the flashing real quick. Look too bad. Pause close, I want to get to that. And you can see I'm just moving the, the miniature around and making sure that I, I catch everything because they can be hidden everywhere <coughs> and make sure that I'm looking at it as I'm doing this too, is to look to see the detail of the miniature. Like this one has a crossbow on its back. It almost looks like flashing in the way, but it'll pop as soon as you start painting it. I guarantee the first time that I did this, I would cut off like something that like wasn't flashing. Like I guarantee I would, I would like take off a weapon or a ribbon or something that actually... <laughs> It will happen. Oops, I forgot my files. Let me grab that real quick. For metal, for the most part, um, I use files. Um, but you could also use um, sandpaper if you want to get that nice little finish to it. I bought this at the um, just a local hardware store. It'll last me for, probably for many decades. <laughs> so now my little diamond tip files here, or diamond uh, um, needle set file. I grabbed a flat, flat one here. Now I'm just gonna go back through, and I'm gonna go through those areas that I clipped out the flashing. And I'm just kind of just soften it up a little bit. There's a little bit of a nubby there. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and just remove it. Just nice, gentle strokes. You don't want to go too much because you're going to start losing detail or may overdo it. Get rid of that. Around the finger, make that a little more defined.
So it doesn't look like he has gnarly fingernails. <laughs> you can see how I'm holding the figure. I'm, I'm stabilizing it the best I can between my fingers and using it just like a pencil. Going one direction to the next. There's a bit of flashing there. Like I said, this one's a mess. <laughs> So I'm not overdoing it, I'm just kind of going through and softening it up. Making sure I got the detail. You can see now that the hand's a little more defined. Before it was really covered with a bunch of flashing. Now the mold line, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, it's right, right there, right down the, down the, his, um, um, oh, I see it, yeah. Is it? Yep. It's very faint. But I'm sure that shows up actually a lot when you put primer on because then the shadow catches it. Yes, and that's uh, something we don't really want. Now I'm going to try something real quick. Uh, usually I use this for plastic, um, this type of technique, but I use an exacto acto knife. Um, and what I do is I just go along, start at the bottom of the mold line and work my way up. It's working out pretty good. I like to... Like scraping it down? Yep, scraping it down. Catching its ledge and scraping it out. Just a long, going a long way of the of the um, mold line, and what I'm basically doing is making that fl make it surface nice and flat. Now, could I do it with um, um, with my files? Probably. Um, I just won't get this as smooth with the file itself. I mean, sometimes it'll be a little bit rougher, so that's why I use this. And plus, I like it. I'll, I'll do this with metal ones because eventually you want a nice dull blade uh, when you start to do plastics so you don't gouge into your plastics. So I'll have like one sharp blade uh, for cutting into things and one dull blade for getting rid of mold lines. But for metal, a sharp one is okay. And yeah, it looks like it's getting shiny, and that's okay. But we're getting rid of that mold line. Is there like a coating that comes on those or something? Yeah, there's a little bit of a coating. Sometimes what I'll do is um, I'll rinse them under water a little bit and take a toothbrush. Oh, okay. And take just off anything. Off. Yeah, just rub it off. It doesn't necessarily need to be shiny because that's... Your primer is going to stick to it no matter what, but just in case if there's any um, residual from the casting and type of slag or something like that, I'll brush it off. All right, it's almost gone. There. You got to kind of be careful as you're doing that because you don't want to ruin any type of detail or ruin the sculpt. Um, have I done it in the past? Yeah. <laughs> I can see if you're using too big of a file, like where you can't, you you know, like you file away other surfaces and not mm -hmm. just the one you're looking at. I could see where that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. 
Hold line going. And you just kind of go with that, you go right along. If you saw one mold line, you just kind of follow that mold line around and see what it's going. For the most part, the sculptors um, sculpt their minis um, so they can hide mold lines um, or you can't see them. And but wide flat surfaces should have them. Yeah, There's wide flat surfaces. On the side of the cloak. Hmm? Yeah, there is. There's actually one here. Right there. Drop your hand a little bit. Oh, I see it. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's a thick one. Yep. If you, if I don't know if you can see it underneath the arm, it's one right there. Yeah, this one didn't cast very well. That's the problem with metal, unfortunately. They don't cast very well. <clears throat> but they're nice because they have the most detail when it comes to um, to a miniature, I find. Well, that makes sense. These certainly look more detailed than some of the other prints I've seen. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little labor intensive. It's a takes a little patience. All right, that one's gone. That one came off pretty easily. Uh, I lied. <laughs> you want to turn your mini a little bit each time to see if um, the light will catch it. All right, I'll get that one underneath the arm. It's a big one. Yep, going to my file. Almost gone. I didn't ruin the detail either, which is good. Yeah. So you're just following that little line down and seeing if you could add any more. Here's one on the armor. Or uh, his belt, whatever, corset. This is a cool file set. Where did you get it? Amazon. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just looked up um, a diamond diamond needle file, and um, are they round or flat? They're different types. Uh, this one is um, it's flat on one side. This one, and it has a uh, uh, triangular type shape on the t on the top. Great for getting into little tight spaces. Oh yeah. Um, I do have rounded ones. Bring it out. Um, sometimes that's kind of nice to get into little places that are real hard to get into. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to get into this uh, crook right here. Matter of fact, I might as well do that. Can round oh, it out. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Whereas a flat one would probably like It'll flatten it out. a line into it. Yeah, exactly. And this is just keeping it. Kind of be in mind that you're not want to ruin any detail, anything else, but you just want to get rid of the mold lines. Right. Yeah, you're looking better, bud. 
Okay, let's see. Go down that mold line again. And for the most part, you may get all you might get all you could possibly see. Then you end up uh, priming it and going, "Oh man, I missed one." So what do you do then? You go ahead and you do the same technique. You're going to rub off. You're going to take off the primer basically as you're doing it. But then you're going to take a little brush and you're going to basically brush on the primer afterwards. Yeah, see, it's right down his arm. By doing this, you're almost like you're trying to re-sculpt it a little bit. So you want to be aware of that. All right. So I got rid of the mold lines. Yeah, he's all set to ready to go, to be primed. Maybe I have to bend him a little bit because um, got all the flashing off. We got all the uh, little mold lines off. He's ready to go to get primed. So that one's done. Now, let's take a look at this one real quick since we're just messing around. Displacer Beast. And this one is plastic? This one is a resin. Put your hand behind it. <clears throat> when you hold it up, put your hand behind it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I can see what I think are mold lines, like on the backs of the legs. Basically, that's kind of just muscle. It's actually just muscle. To, um, oh, okay. Now, do I see any mold lines? Usually these are pretty good. There's actually one back here. Now these are supposed to be like uh, pre-primed and ready to go. You just just bring it out and, and prime them or just paint them. Um, I've never really tested it uh, that way. I usually always end up priming in anyways. Um, I might just do one just for the heck of it to test it out. But right here there's a mold line right here. Just a little bit of a move your hands over right there just a little bit of a nubby okay just removing it being real careful not going too on with the, the blade because it's going to nick it otherwise i was going to say the plastic is a lot softer right so you don't want to use a file for this you don't no not a file Will that chew up the plastic? It'll chew it right up. That's why you want a doll blade so it doesn't nick. Been doing this for a while, so. You said a doll blade? Yep. Okay. Then I will tend to do get the highest grit. The high, higher the grit, the finer your sanding will be. Now take it. 
try to get it so I can stabilize it. And just sit there and kind of smooth it out. Find that nearest any little place. Just smooth it out a little bit. Now, I don't know if it's the resin. Yeah, now it's gone now. Um, boy, there's a lot of spaces. Um, I don't know if it's because the resin that makes it pre-primed and ready to go. Because um, I just sanded that and didn't change any of the structure. Nor the feel of it. So it still feels pretty rough. Right. Um, I may try one to see if the paint will stick. And how well it sticks. Now, is this just a particular brand that says it's primed and ready to go? Yeah, it says or it right in the... most resin? It'll actually say it right in the box, right down in the box. Primed, ready to paint. Drop your hand a little bit, sorry. It's okay. Ready to paint. Not Perfect. sure that's the case. There you go. Okay. I wonder what they use. Well, I wonder what they use to prime it then. Like, what makes that different than other things? Other well, just figures? feeling the resin itself, it feels um, a little rough. You know, it doesn't feel smooth like a lot of plastics. I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that might be what it is, uh, because what the primer does, it causes these little bit of, um, I don't want to say like pearls, a little bit of roughness to the. Um, mini itself. So the paint actually adhere to it and stick and not rub right off. So I don't know if that's okay. what the case may be. Yeah, even this one has mold lines. This one's going to take a lot of work. On his um, tentacles, you can see a, a, a line that runs right through it. Right down those. Oh, I see it. Yep. Oh, and the other one. Huh. And that's not like a vein or something. That's like a... It's a yeah, it's a mold line. I was thought it might be a, be a vein. But I'm looking at it and go, no, that's a mold line. Hmm. Well, that's a bummer. Have you ever tried to use heat to smooth out? Uh, no, but I have used heat to soften it, to mm -hmm. bend it. <laughs> that makes sense. That's, that's That totally makes sense. So if I like want to straighten something out a little bit or yeah. it's a little bent, um, I'll take some heat to soften it and then bend it to shape. Like this one, I'm not too sure it's actually supposed to be resting on the other one. So I might actually take a little heat and just raise that up a little bit. Oh, I see what you're saying. To almost change the angle of it. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise so it just wants to rest on top of that. Got it. Okay. So I might take a little heat gun, hit it just for a little bit, and then, you know, as I'm feeling it, I'll just then I'll move it, hold it for a while until it cools down, and then it should be fine. This one almost wants to bend anyways. Nope. It's still springy. Okay. So that's pretty much it when it comes to... Um, Removing mold lines and flashings. Um, just looking at those fingers again. <clears throat> you know, I do have these figures here. I kind of want to point out, also brought one I primed and got ready to go um, for my daughter. She loves frogs. <laughs> oh my god, that's too cute. So that one's ready to go. But out of these, I think I'll leave it up to the, the audience to see, well, what one do you want me to paint? Which okay. one do you want me to do? Um, so from... Like left to right, 
we'll go one, two, three, four, and then five on the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> and when we post this, we'll have um, people in Discord and people um, like in the comments and whatnot pick one through five, and we'll see over the next few weeks what the um, what the choice is, whether like which one to to paint. Yeah, I think that would be nice to have the, the community decide which one. The... Okay. So from left to right, one, two, three, four, and then the frog is number five on the bottom. <laughs> Sweet. That would be a fun one to paint. Cool. But... <clears throat> would you, so um, for the project, are you going to do more than one type? Like a resin one and a metal one? or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As I'm going along, I'll paint... Um, as I go through the tutorials of um, and get through with that, and I'll start painting, hey, we're going to paint this one. We're going to start doing a metal one, or we're going to do a resin one, or we're going to do a plastic one. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Um, we'll go through those. And um, um, hey, today I'm going to be painting this one. Okay. Um, yeah, so. So we'll have the viewers pick the first one. Yeah, let them pick the first one. Okay. Um, and then over the next couple weeks, um, your next stream, you're thinking will probably be in, in two or three weeks. So our discord, um, I don't know that our bot is working. It is not because of course I made it too quiet. One second, please. One shut up. It would not shut up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn thing. It's funny that it's blue tack on here. Hmm? It's funny it's there's blue tack on here. I don't remember the last one having it. You didn't you didn't put that on there? I don't think I did. Oh. I don't remember ever putting one on there. Well, it's gone now. Hmm. shut up and then now I can't turn it off. But we use the stream lab one for holy crap it's stream elements. So I shall just have to add it to stream labs. And that way we're not using fifteen different Comment under the video or join the Discord. Help us pick which uh, which model will be the first one that we make. Okay. Yeah. We do straight up plastic. Do we have time yet? Um... I don't want to make this too long. I want it to be a short. <laughs> Maybe. We're in about 44 minutes. Oh, <laughs> definitely not a short. <laughs> I didn't realize the time could fly so fast. So, this is from Game Workshop. This is Long Strike. Uh, you can see that it's all has sprues. The sprues are the stuff that's holding the stuff together uh, in one piece. When it and when it does its mold, it um, presses against it, and so that it comes out like this. So there's a lot of assembly require, required. So I'll take my big ones to get through some of these sprues, the thick ones, anyways. And I'll just go through and just cut, cut them right off, being mindful where where I'm cutting.
Yeah, I freed up a hand. Now I'll just go through my god hand here and get rid of cut real close, as close as I can get to get rid of the sprue part. And it's really be tough to see. Teeny bits. Teeny weeny bits. See the sprue is making his thumb look a lot larger than it's supposed to be. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna take the god hand and just slice it right off. I love these um <clears throat> Those, I need to get a pair of those for like making dice. Yeah, they're very nice. Off of dice or sprues off of dice that like gets you right up flush with them, so that it's easier to sand them basically. Yeah, these puppies puppies aren't cheap, but they're well worth the, the investment. I think I've ever had a similar. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Do you keep calling them God Hand? Yeah, that's the brand. Oh, that's awesome. the. That is amazing. Yeah, that's the brand name. <laughs> that is epic. Um, so when you're looking on Amazon, you put down um, uh, God Hand Side Cutters, and that's where you'll find them. Um, but they're highly specialized um, tools. You can get real close with these. Not all the way, you know, but some places like here is just I can't just get to it, so I'm gonna have to take some sand, some sandpaper, and just sit here and like work at it. Work at it. Probably go with a higher grit, and then we'll just kind of bring it down, and then make it flush. So that's gonna take a while. Um, where's the rest of it? Oh, look at the head real quick. It's kind of fascinating. They got like a thick one there. On your other stream, will you show how to take a mini out of the box like that and stick it together? Yeah. Build it together. Yeah. I know you're just doing mold lines and stuff now, so I'm trying not to distract you. That's okay. Um, I was actually thinking about planning and doing that. I thought, well, maybe, you know, the flush out the 15 minutes, but obviously I'm, like, way over time. <laughs> um, learn the hard way. Wow. They make this easy, don't they? No, it seems like it's very thick around the figure. Mm -hmm. That's why I use the big ones, the ones that are not going to be. Um... I don't have to worry about the, um, ruining the integrity of it. And these are just, you know, cheap uh, hobby side cutters that I used. But like this one, I'm kind of going around, seeing where the feet land. Since this one goes right into a tank, there's no base or anything for it. A fish tank? <laughs> As in a... Um... <laughs> It does, it's like, it's a fish tank. It's it a like fish. A scuba diver. That's a cow joke. <clears throat> yeah, they're fish. What can I say? <laughs> Although their planet's very arid, so I don't know where fish actually kid came from. Maybe because they look like they got a gill on top of their head, but. So I'm just going through with the god hand, getting rid of all the stuff. It's a little bit easier with these to get down real close, but then you would have to go through and, and, um, and do that. Um, 
go with the sandpaper and get the rest of it. But like I said, I got this one pretty much taken care of, this head part. So I'm going to match it up, make sure it's nice and fitting nicely. If we don't have any that looks good and so forth. So then I'm going to take a little super glue. I normally use um, the Ultra Gel Control Locket. Unfortunately, they all dried up on me. Wish I would have known that sooner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, I just used this not too long ago. And that stuff doesn't melt the plastic? Um, This stuff, no, I mean, will not. I, I get that it does it a tiny bit, so it's that it'll adhere. Right. But it doesn't, like, you know, turn into, like, a melted... No, there's actually specialized plastic glues out there um, that will actually, um, it does melt the plastic just a little bit, make it nice and soft so it adheres to the part. Mm -hmm. You can't read it. I'm going to put a little glue. All right, want to play that way? There, done. Oh, great. That's why I like the locket stuff because it works a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's gel and it's a lot more controlled. So I'll put a little glue down there. This is super glue, and then I just place the it in there. Kind of hold it in place. Get See, it to the... If we were in Europe, there's this magic glue that they use that like they they just barely like wave it past the item and they tap the thing on it and just let it go and it holds. It's amazing. Yeah it's uh it's like Uber halt or some <laughs> kind of crazy well, there's, glue. <clears throat> there is, um, it's called accelerant. It's a glue accelerant. They use for super glue or a, um, um, accelerant. Um, is it like a spray that you put, you do the super glue and then spray it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to show you these terrain videos so you can see the instant magic that we're talking about. There's a little bit of editing shenanigans. <laughs> we're hoping because otherwise it's, it's like the wildest glue I've ever heard of. Alright, I hate this super glue already. <laughs> have I ever glued myself to a miniature? I sure have. <laughs> yeah, I already would have by now. If this is me doing this, I totally would have by now. It happens. <clears throat> this is probably the slowest super glue I've ever had. It's fine. But I'll just sit there and hold it. Um, as I'm doing that, I'll start fitting the other arm, making sure there's no uh, obstructions or it's fitting quite nicely. There's a uh, sprue here or a, a thing that will fit right inside. Um, the R piece. Let's see if I can show you like that. Looks right on. Does this glue work for metal? This one. I'm going to say no because it's not working for plastic either. Um, <laughs> All right. <then. laughs> this stuff works on plastic, on metal, on everything. Um, wow. The, the, you can also get a, the uh, like a, um, a glue type. Um, it's called a, a cyanoacrylate glue. Um and that works really good. It really adheres to the metal and it sticks together. 
Um, I don't have anything right now with that, and I apologize for that. Um, probably. Isn't Santa actually super Yes. Yes. A little super glue, not the, not so super glue he has. <laughs> like this is uh, this is the actual stuff that I use, but um, there's stuff that in there that has like a brush they can use um, that will attach pieces like this together. Um, if I had the actual super glue that we're supposed to have, we wouldn't have this problem, but we do today. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, stick finally. But I hate this stuff. Oh man. Um, this is from Army Painter. I had to get it at the last moment. Sorry, Army Painter. <coughs> I put a little dab in that little um, hole. And stick it on. Now, there's um, other ways of putting it on after you put it onto the, the figure to keep it there, um, like little clamps and so forth. Sometimes I'll use something like this to hold it in place so I don't glue myself to it. Um, little hemostats. Yeah, I'd have to use some. I would, I would you can use um, glue myself to it. alligator clips. I've used those before. <laughs> now the question is, a lot of times of people would ask, would you actually put it together ahead of time or leave it apart? Because now this arm is kind of covering up some of that armor and it'd be real hard to get a brush in there. Um, not impossible, just real hard. So sometimes I will leave the arm off and glue it together after I'm done painting. Um, I can see where that would cause problems, though, also. Because what if the glue interacted with the paint? Well, then you have, like, a weird... What I do is I scrape out the paint where it's supposed to hook up. Oh, that makes sense. He's put together. He's, like, the easiest one. Now, if I really want to have a challenge, we could do a broadside. <laughs> but that's like an hour long. <laughs> wow. That one will have to unbox on another one and like go from unboxing to mold and like assembly prep and then prime it. Yes. That'd be a fun one to do. That would be awesome. That'd be a real fun one to do. So I think we're going to, um, well, I'll show you one more quick thing. This is a heavy metal figure from uh, the early uh, second edition um, uh, figures. Um, now this one has a, a particular, it's real heavy. And the way it's kind of bent, it's going to be almost impossible to keep a nice glue in there. So what I have to do is what we call pinning. I don't know if you can see that or not. I drilled a hole and put a pin in there. Drilled another hole in the other part. Oh, got it. Put it together. And when you glue it, it's going to help stay there a little bit. Now, this one's a little more interesting because you'll have to fill in some of these gaps with green stuff or milliput. That'd be something to show. That'd yeah. be something to show later on. That would actually be a good one, too. Um, same with the arm. So it's real heavy. I'm going to drill the hole. Another hole. Put a pin in there. When we glue it, that will keep it on there real nice and steady. Almost leave it on there. So that's pinning. When I glue it together, it'll keep a nice, um, solid area. This one too will need a little bit of green stuff to get in some of those spaces. Hmm. But to its head, lost its head. My 
That would be kind of an amazing thing to paint. I believe this is a, a hill giant. Yeah, that would be an amazing thing to paint. There are lots and lots of very cool minis out there. <clears throat> oh, when I'm done, when I'm ready to, to prime, I'll manually put it on a bottle cap um, or a doll. Is, little, is your little frog one on a bottle cap? Yeah, it is. I glued that one on. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get off. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but I'll get it off. What I normally do is I'll take a, my X-Acto knife and get it underneath there and pry it off. Decorate it. <clears throat> Make it look like it's standing on a giant toadstool. I could do that. Yeah, I start gluing stuff to bottle caps until I found this stuff. Um, which is two-sided tape, through by 3M. <coughs> da -da -da. And it holds with brushing and with everything. mold line removal and everything? Yep. Well, mold line, I tend not to do that. I like to hold them on mini as I'm doing it. Okay. But as I'm ready for painting, it's there. It's nice and sturdy. You're not going to... You shouldn't be pushing on it that hard. Nope. <laughs> and this is easier to come off. Ten times easier to come off than gluing it. Or use... And it's a lot more uh, stickier than using um, tack. Uh, whether it be blue tack or... Um, um, your um, model or ten. <laughs> so, all right. I think I'm done showing stuff for today. Um, I do appreciate you guys staying with me and um, seeing how to put some stuff together. This is just one one little short video to uh, well, semi short to show you how to remove metal lines. Uh, next thing will be for learning how to, pr to prime. Um, I do want to show eventually, probably going to show you how to prime with an airbrush. So, but you could do it with a can and we'll show that a little later too in the next video. All right. Um, I hope, do you have any questions or anything? Um, in, in the comments, um, when you guys watch this, whether it's on YouTube, whether it is on Discord, um, the Discord link is in chat. Um, and we'll make sure that, if, especially if it's in, in Discord, Zappa will see them. Um, on YouTube, we'll make sure that he gets uh, the questions and can answer them in the next series. And don't forget, um, earlier in the video, the models were one through four on the top, five on the bottom. Um, so in Discord, I'll I'll clip, um, the I'll clip that so that it's easy to see, um, and there'll be a picture of it in Discord, and you guys can vote on which one is the first one that he paid. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for. Have a good night. <laughs>